Bubble, bubble, more joy than trouble. Luke Burbank has a rock band he wants you to hear. Her name is Yoshime. She's a black belt in karate. Over the course of almost 40 years, countless albums, and three Grammys, the Flaming Lips have established themselves as one of music's most prolific and delightfully weird bands. And if you thought a global pandemic might slow down their creative output, you haven't met Wayne Coyne. I think I'm descended from like some indestructible Viking guy who if he wasn't digging his family out of the snow or fighting some battle, he probably was gonna go crazy. Coyne is the band's founder, lead singer, and apparently lead Viking. I think I'm kind of like that. If I'm not doing something, you know, I kind of go crazy. And so to keep from going crazy during a pandemic and promote the band's new album, American Head, Wayne Coyne came up with maybe his most ambitious idea ever, the Space Bubble Concert, which was held in their hometown of Oklahoma City back in March. We think it's a part of music history. We really think that this is, you know, the future. Here's how it worked. Each group of up to three audience members were zipped into clear vinyl bubbles, which were then inflated with leaf blowers All so these lucky few could see their favorite band, live and COVID safe. Formed in 1983 in Oklahoma City by Coyne, his brother Mark, and friends, early on the band prided itself on not being for everybody. We're doing our art and you know, if you're just a normal person on the street, you should hate us, you know? If you like us too much, we must be doing something wrong. He's insanely creative and creatively insane. Stephen Droz, a multi-instrumentalist and singer who Coyne calls the musical genius of the group, joined the band in 1991. He has a lot of confidence and faith in me, and that's a, that's a good thing because, like, when I joined, I joined as a drummer. And, you know, there's a joke that says, uh, what was the last thing the drummer said before they kicked him out of the band? <laughs> hey guys, I have a song. <laughs> In 1993, the band attracted the attention of Warner Brothers Records. She make you breakfast. She make you toast. And scored a surprise hit with the song butter. She Don't Use Jelly. She don't use cheese. She don't use jelly. The sudden notoriety was a major change for Coyne, who for most of the previous 20 years had been working at a Long John Silver's restaurant, where he was once robbed at gunpoint. A terrifying, and for him, life-changing event. After I didn't die, these petty insecurities that you have about doing especially stuff like art and music, and for a little while, I was just a Superman, it didn't matter. Because to me, it's like, that's not important. Who cares about that? I'm alive. I can do whatever I want. Coyne used the money from his very first record deal with Warner Brothers to buy a home for $20,000 in what was then one of Oklahoma City's poorest neighborhoods. It's a big house that we felt like we could all live here. We could rehearse here. And three decades later, he's still there, surrounded by peacocks, his art, and his wife, Katie, and son, Bloom. I call him the Energizer Bunny because he goes to sleep with more energy than me and he wakes up with more energy. He's like, let's go, we got to do it. So he like, he dreamed up the bubble shows and drew a little sketch. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. And I really didn't know for a long time that he was really trying to make it happen. But if he's, if he's trying to make something happen, he's going to make it happen. The idea of an entire audience safely sealed in bubbles came to coin one day while he was sitting in traffic. I'm driving in the car, and I think, oh yeah, that'd be funny. So I just do the quickest 20 second sketch. And then, you know, a uh, half hour later, I'm like, oh, I got it, all right. Coyne himself first rode a space bubble on top of the crowds 
at the Coachella Music Festival back in 2004. But to seal the entire audience in bubbles, well, that was a complicated thing. I mean, the logistics of this are crazy, right? It's, a, it's, it's, it's worse than I even thought. Coin agonized over every detail, from the signs for audience members to hold up if they get too hot or have to use the bathroom, to how to disinfect the bubbles after the show. I want you to know that we absolutely love you. Thank you for taking a chance and doing this bizarre thing. It's probably safe to say that the Flaming Lips might be the only band in the world who could have figured out how to pull off a safe in-person concert during a pandemic. A pandemic that's killed far too many Americans. In fact, death and the heartbreaking beauty of being alive are common themes in the band's music. Including in arguably their biggest hit, Do You Realize? According to Wayne Coyne, sometimes it's easier for him to sing about things than to talk about them. I had to tell my father when he came back from his last, you know, seeing if his cancer was going to kill him or if it was going to be better. I was the one that had to tell him that he wasn't going to get better, you know. You wish you could do that in a song, you know, you wish it was just another way to say, I'm going to present this thing to you and it's because it's just impossible to say things. As the concert drew to a close and the audience swayed in their bubbles, it was clear the Flaming Lips had accomplished what they'd set out to do, to find the beauty in the strangeness that is life in this moment of time. It sounds hokey, but you know, I say you have to do this stuff with love. You know, you can't do it for these ego reasons or these money reasons. You know, you have to do everything with, with love. Do you